Good afternoon and welcome to our second concurrent session of the day, a college algebra story, success story. Our presenter today is Dr. John Taylor from University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Dr. John Russell Taylor studied mathematics and history at North Carolina State University and received his Master's of Science in Applied Mathematics from the school in 1990. In 2006, John received his doctorate degree in Applied Mathematics from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. John has been a professor and lecturer at UNCC since 2006. Since 2013, John has helped lead the redesign of pre-calculus, calculus, and college algebra courses at UNCC. If you have any questions for the presenter during the session, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom room screen, and we will address them at the end of the talk. On that note, I will hand it over to our presenter. Hey, how you doing? Uh, let's see if I can get my uh, PowerPoint presentation up here and see if it's working for everybody. Here we go. All right, hi, my name is John. Um, I'm a professor here at UNC Charlotte and uh, I was gonna let you guys know about the uh, college algebra sequence that we have, the college algebra course that we have and the redesign that we've done uh, years ago and the continuation of that redesign that we're continuing working on, uh, especially since uh, COVID and, and the interesting things that come out about that. So let's get started. Uh, first off, why did we need a redesign? In the fall semester, we have approximately 2,000 students registered and nearly 750 registered in the spring semester, with these numbers increasing each year. In a typical semester, professors of the course are made up by approximately one-third full-time faculty, one-third part-time faculty, and one-third graduate students. Of the part-time faculty, about half are new, work for the department less than two years, and most of the graduate students will have college algebra as their first class taught under their own direction. Problems with the overall results uh, of the course included, one, uh, a lack of consistent teaching throughout the large number of sections and the professors teaching the course. Two, a wide range of scores on the common final exam. Large DNF ratings did not finish the course in each section. And three, a lack of consistent use by the professors of our web work home, uh, online homework system. Because of all these factors, college algebra became one of, the, one of our top courses on the list for a redesign. The redesign uh, team uh, was called by the university uh, and the mathematics department to come up with a solution where uh, Dr. Muhammad Kazimi, he's the associate chair of the math department, Miss Elizabeth Eagle, Mrs. Desiree Taylor, and myself. The redesign team focused on one, a computer software homework system. Most important was to find and work with a, a textbook company that offered an online homework system with their textbook that had the course content that we required. The software system that would had to be easy to use and create special homework and quizzes within the system. And three, the, the uh, software system had to work well with our students and most importantly, with our instructors. We chose the Hulk system. Now, the reason, one of the biggest reasons we chose the Hulk system was that they were one of the few companies that were actually willing to uh, basically fit their material to our course instead of just us adopting the, uh, the book company's uh, particular software system that they're offered. Uh, they have been absolutely wonderful to work with. We created college algebra half notes for faculty and students to make sure special types of examples are covered in lecture. Half notes are formulas and questions that have no answers that the instructor goes over in class while the students take notes. Since most students don't know how to, how to study and take notes, the half notes allowed them to understand the process of note taking. So, and this also aligned us to have 
all the faculty members kind of teaching the same material in somewhat the same fashion. We created a small 15, 10 to 15 minute videos that introduced the basic idea of the material in each section and then created pre-section quizzes throughout the computer software system based upon the video that was made. These pre-section quizzes would take about five easy problems that made sure the students were watching the videos before coming to class so they would have an idea about what material we were about to cover. Because it just bothered me to no end to have a student come into my class, Dr. Taylor, what we're covering today? Don't you know, dude? I mean, you gotta keep up with the material. They should know what we're about to be covering, what section we're in, and keeping up with the course content and stuff. This allowed us to do that. We used the online software system, the Hulk system, for creating a homework set for each section that was due in about five days after finishing each section. Because we used a lot of the mastery level ideas that Hawks had created with each traditional test, we also created a small online test that would be in a combination with the test grade from the traditional test in order to give an overall test grade for that set of material. So they were getting a, a traditional test, in-class test, paper, pencil type test. And they were also having to do a uh, online test with the material as well, since we've been working with all the homework systems online and stuff. We decided we were also going to give them an online test on that type of material, but we're also going to give them a traditional test. And then we did a combination of both to give them a test grade for that material. Then we put it together into a web-based platform. Now, Moodle originally, but then our new platform returned into Canvas for each instructor to upload and then personalize it in order to make it their own. You know, like with all universities, uh, you know, they love change. So as soon as we've got the whole thing set up in the Moodle system, well, they switched it over to Canvas. So we had to redo the whole thing and put it in the Canvas system. Each section covered in the textbook has our own web-based platform before, each, before uh, class activities, after class activities as seen below. And the MLC is denoted as our math resource slash learning center uh, where the graduate students would help uh, answer individual questions from students. It was a, it, our math learning center is a tutoring center to if you got questions in pretty much any math class, they, uh, that's a great place for us to go. So we just created that math learning center right, right from uh, um, when we were doing the redesigns and stuff. So this was our idea in terms of how students were supposed to come to class. They had before class activities, which included watching the video and taking the pre-section quiz. Then they come to class, take notes off of it. And then after class, they went right back into the Hulk system and started working on their uh, homework sets. Preliminary results. The new Math 1100 College Algebra redesign was unveiled in the fall of 2015 semester where four instructors volunteered to try out the new course. The instructors that were requested and chose, chosen to use the redesign course in the fall of 2015 were myself, uh, Elizabeth Eagle, Shana Peden, and our graduate student, uh, R. Tim Huko. Um, and so we had a nice little mixed bag here of, of instructors. We had three full-time faculty members, and we actually had a graduate student that volunteered to work with us on this. So the rest of the instructors would, uh, were, used the old textbook and the old web, web, uh, web work platform as before. So I coded the data as such. Um, experienced faculty, you'll see that. Those are, the, those are faculty with at least five years of full-time faculty member experience. We had some new faculty, less than five years experience so as a full-time faculty member. Experienced part-time faculty member, at least five years experience uh, as a part-time faculty member and a new faculty member, less than five years experience. And we also had graduate students teaching the course as well. In our fall semester, that's when we have uh, so many students actually sign up for the course. Our spring semester, uh, the, the number of students signed up for college algebra is significantly less. And I've got some data for that as well. So here was the fall 2015 common exam scores, just to give you an idea. Um, my Fortunately, my class did incredibly well. I have usually teach these huge lecture classes where I had 120 people in the class, of which I 
108 of them to actually took the exam. And you get to see on the right side, the adjusted mean. Now the adjusted mean, the university does adjust our averages based upon how many people that uh, did not take the actual exam. They do put that in as a uh, score, but not quite as, as a zero, but not quite as, uh, you know, just everybody met a zero on that. Now they, there's a math little formula they come up with to be able to adjust the mean for having folks not take the exam. If they didn't take the exam, and they typically, that meant they dropped out of the course before we got to the exam. So you get to see. And now the most important aspect of this was out of the top five uh, uh, averages on the exam, three of them were actually uh, using the redesign that we just created and stuff. That was significant to us. But you can see the averages. And you can also take a look at these averages because there's this is more than just this one. I've got a lot more data here. This is just the top instructors here on the averages and stuff. But the, the high average was an 81. But if you keep on going and you get to see all the different types of faculty that are using it and stuff and getting used to the new system and stuff, uh, the lowest average was down there at the graduate student who was teaching the section 701. That was our traditional online course, which usually is the uh, one that typically doesn't do real well on the final exam. So we had an average from 80 pretty much to 55. That is a huge spread in terms of grades. That was, you're seeing the real problem and why we needed the redesign in this. And so uh, we're getting used to the new system and stuff and these experienced faculty that chose the Hulk, they, their class actually did very well. Uh, again, it was that uh, the number of students that end up not taking the exam kind of hurts our averages and stuff, but you really do get to see that classic spread from the high to the low of what's exactly going on with our college algebra before the redesign. But the fact that the top five, three of them were actually using the Hulk system right from the beginning when we still had some things we were working out in the system and stuff like that, that was significant to us. So by the spring of 2016 semester, all the faculty were encouraged to use the redesign and the part-time and graduate students, uh, instructors were required to use the redesign. Uh, we made that decision very quickly the following semester. So, and here comes the, the next data. And, and pretty much all the faculty jumped on board with this thing. And take a look, this is the spring. Now, spring semester is our small semester classes. So you get to see our enrollment you know, drop some significantly. We only have 728 students actually enrolled in the spring semester. And that's normal with college algebra. Fall is huge with college algebra. Spring, we don't have, we don't need as many sections. So this is small. So this is the whole department kind of trying this thing out. We do have uh, one instructor who is uh, with the math ed department uh, who uh, likes to try different things and try new things. And he doesn't typically use uh, the, any kind of system. He has his home um, aspect of teaching the class and he, he typically does very well and stuff. So, he, and he's also doing some grant work with the, his data and stuff. So, uh, of course, the math department allows him to kind of do his own thing. And, but you get to see where these guys are actually located at. Look at the standard deviation. Now, uh, again, the high average on our final exam for one class was up there at 85, 85.9. Uh, the low was down there at 69.8, pretty much a 70. Our standard deviation, our spread of the data has dropped significantly because we're kind of all doing the same thing. And for the first time in UNC Charlotte history, the uh, online course, and this again, this is spring 2016, the online course, which was what we, we, what we call now asynchronous, which typically has a large DNF rating and which really completely kills their average, wasn't on the bottom. They actually did pretty well considering it was the online course. But that was, again, very encouraging to us. So if, we know that our redesign was working. So by the fall semester 2016, all faculty, except for the special few, um, part-time and graduate students were required to use the redesign. However, there was one in this particular semester, math education's professor that tried to do his own system. And one part-time instructor that added to the teaching faculty late during the first week of classes and did not use the redesign. And I feel obligated because that, that was actually my fault. Uh, I didn't know they had one extra open session and at section and the math department hired somebody at the last minute and they did not give me that information until like 
two weeks into the semester. Oh, by the way, that other section we needed, and we hired somebody, but nobody gave her anything except the old textbook and the old way of doing things. So here we go, more data. So again, the what well, we have a common final exam. So everybody in college algebra takes the exact same final exam from each different section. And what you're looking at is the average of those final exams. So uh, again, for, uh, the, uh, labeling them as experienced part-time uh, uh, faculty, uh, you know, I actually had the best score up there at 78, but this is a large section. So I got two pages of data for you guys. The uh, OT, uh, OHT, that was the original Hawks team. Um, they're no longer even at the top stuff. They're actually going down because of the faculty beginning to learn the system as we're tweaking the system and stuff. But again, the averages for us are actually very good. And again, when you look at these things, uh, you'll notice that the, uh, part, the new part-timer that did not get to use the Hulk system because I didn't know about it was pretty much at the bottom. And once again, our online courses got actually at the bottom again. Every semester is a little, a little different, but the, one of the big reasons is look at how many people that were enrolled and end up having people actually took the final exam. We have a large number of students that start that class but just never finish it. It completely kills their average at the end of the semester and stuff. But at the end of the day, if you ignore the pretty much those bottom two guys for obvious reasons, the standard, D, the spread of the data again is not bad. We're all doing the same thing. It didn't matter which faculty member they had. I mean, some did a little better than others and stuff like that. It could contribute to the personality of the instructor or whatever the case may be. Um, but they're all tight right there together. That is what we consider a huge excess compared to what we had in the past where the numbers were just literally all over the place. So the fall 2017 exam results for our students, give you some more data. It's exactly the same thing. Um, my friend from math ed department had a very good semester. He was towards the top. He always teaches the large sections as well. So, um, you know, and, and this, so he, he's trying new things, some of the things that we're kind of uh, doing, and then he puts some other things on his own stuff that he likes to do uh, and trying to see what works and stuff like that. So again, you, you get to see the numbers kind of all over the place, but uh, again, uh, there's that online course right there at the bottom again. And again, it's that large half the class didn't take the final exam, completely killed the average on that class. But the rest of them, I mean, again, we got some new part-timers and we got some, you know, it really depends on the But again, the, the it's, grades are actually much tighter than they used to be because we're all pretty much doing the same thing. So our preliminary conclusions were by using the college algebra redesign embedded with the Hulk system and software, our overall common exams averages over the past four semesters have been consistent. However, the standard deviation of the exam scores have significantly decreased. This was due to a more unified teaching approach and greatly due to the ease and use of the Hulk system and software by the students and faculty, which made uh, it all possible. The Hulk software program and the online support for both students and more importantly, faculty uh, is simply the best. I mean, I cannot give uh, more compliments to, to, to the Hulk folks, especially for the faculty assistants, because how many times did I, when I was teaching that course, um, I was on the phone to these guys all the time because I was always screwing up something or other. Um, the other point of interest to the university uh, is the overall DNF ratings. As they have somewhat gone down under the redesign with Hawks, they're still high. This can be attributed to the amount of work required with our redesign in the before class activities and then after class activities. Now that 90% of the faculty are using the redesign with the Hulk system, our DNF ratings have continued to uh, decrease and get smaller. So again, we do still have a lot of folks that uh, start the class, but they're with taking college algebra and the way we have it set up. Before you come to class, you've got things to do. And the only way people actually do anything is if you have to force them to do it by putting some points on it. So you got to take the, you got to watch the video, you got to take the pre section quiz, you got to come to class, take notes, then you got to get right back into the Hulk system and start working on your homeworks and get that mastery level uh, that we typically set for each particular homework set and stuff before. Uh, time runs out on before we move on to the next section. However, for those students that do the work and stick it out for the semester, 
their overall grades have significantly increased, which makes the department and the university very happy with the results. As we analyzed our final exam results for the last four years in conjunction with the overall grades, the data overwhelming supports the success of the Hawk system with our college algebra redesign. We're now working on using Hawk's system with our business calculus as well as our pre-calculus class. Some of my comments, these are actually right off of my evaluations for my, my course uh, when I actually first did that first uh, setup, uh, that first semester with the redesign. These were actually students' comments on my evaluations and stuff. Now with this, you'll see a lot of comments about the videos that I made. And I, I encourage all universities and colleges to make your own videos. They're, 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 the ones that the uh, Hawks makes are absolutely superb. And we use those as well. But there's something about when a student sees an actual faculty member at the college or wherever they're attending actually doing the videos and stuff like that, that actually reinforces the idea that they really do need to pay attention to this material and study it because their professor or one of the members of the faculty are at their university is actually doing the videos and stuff. So I strongly recommend uh, making your own video, especially this day and especially uh, we're right in the middle of COVID and all the interesting new technologies that we've been given in the last year. Um, but uh, definitely I would recommend you making your own videos and start small and then over time you tend to build these guys up. Okay, and this was a student uh, that you know, I made these videos you know, back in 2016, actually, though I recorded the entire lecture class on mine and put it on YouTube that actually is embedded in the Hawk system now. But this was one a student that gave me in January of 2018, and I wasn't even an instructor, which was really heartwarming here. Non-measurable benefits, number one, again, I go straight back to this, and this honestly is the selling point for Hawks above any other book rep folks out there. And that one is committed course support agent, faculty training sessions on campus every semester, and that 24 seven support hotline. That just makes it superb, that 24 seven, and I'm not just talking about calling up somebody and getting a ticket and maybe they'll call you back after a while if you know which company I'm talking about. Um, I call them up and somebody actually answers the phone and then we start working on letting them know who I am. We get into my system and it's usually fixed within a couple of minutes after I screwed it up for a couple of days of screwing it up. I, they fix it very quickly. They know my problems and if they do have an issue with it, it is taken care of immediately. That puts on the top burner. And, and it is superb support for the faculty as well as the students. We have, you know, the student support is absolutely so excellent as well. Um, but I'm looking at it from a strict faculty perspective, not just for me, but also for my fellow faculty members that are working with the system. Uh, we work very well with the Hawks folks. And it's just, I, I can't thank them enough for that type of commitment to the faculty is we're always screwing something, especially with these computer systems and stuff. I'm trying to do this, want to do this, I want to try something new. Uh, they are right there with us and showing us what, what how to do it and, how, and, and what we can do and things that you know, to help us improve stuff. It, it's absolutely support, it's superb. Uh, faculty orientation. Again, I go back to the faculty side of this stuff. You know, this ease of setting up the course and sharing it with new and inexperienced faculty streamlines the process of the orientation, new experienced uh, faculty in the course and development uh, departmental policies, such as syllabus, grade distribution, ensures that the students receive a high, equally high quality instruction across multiple sections. You know, 
the folks at Hawks send us a person every semester at the beginning of semester and they're there and we have training sessions for the new faculty, refreshers for the old faculty, because some folks like myself, I, I'm a jack of all trades. I'll teach any course that the university tells me to, whether it be DPQ, calculus, uh, you know, graduate level courses, college algebra, I, I'm, I'm a switch hitter. So I tend to teach a bunch of different kind of courses depending on what the department needs and stuff. So I obviously have taught college algebra, um, but then it may be a two years before I get to teach it again or something like that. And I would have forgotten all the things that I'm supposed to remember what I was used to do and stuff like that. They are absolutely superb about helping me remember what the things I'm supposed to do when I go back and set up the course once again and stuff like that. Uh, improve course delivery. Improves the course accessibility uh, and delivery for increasingly technologically inclined generation uh, would be our students. Uh, modern and appealing course uh, appearance and consistent high quality delivery method what we are actually providing for our students when we've basically teamed up our course with the Hawk system. And now more information as the story continues. Okay, three years later, after we started the redesign, after we have used the Hawks consistently from college algebra since 2016, our student mean and exam scores have remained consistent with smaller standard deviations between sections. Again, it's still doing exactly what we designed it to do. Okay. And so here was the fall 2018 exam results. And again, I'll give you the fall one because that's our big data sets because that's our large number of sections that we teach every semester here. And so you'll see, again, I went back to my old code and I'm sorry for this for the people that I work with, but a uh, new part-time faculty member, an old part-time faculty member, and that's that more than five years experience type thing here. Uh, and also old faculty members. But you'll also see that we're using a lot more faculty members. The actual full-time faculty is uh, being ordered by the department to do other things. And we're going to take college algebra. We got more graduate students and more part-time faculty. And you'll see, honestly, I, I didn't code it on this one, but they are a lot of the same professors teaching these multiple sections of the class and stuff. But you'll see the averages going from 76 and then all the way down to that online um, you know, online course, which is back down to Ray there at the bottom. So every semester it, it deviates a little bit, uh, but that online course, that was the asynchronous um, type of course and stuff that uh, students have to be well motivated to take because we just throw it out there for them and they got some, uh, some things to hit. Um, my friend from the uh, math ed department still uh, tweaking this, that and the other. And we also know, you know, he's got the incredibly large section there, but we also know every semester the class has changed. Some semesters you get the best class in the world. I happen to get that the first time I used the redesign stuff. Other semesters, I get the world's worst class. I mean, these people do, have, do not have a personality. They do not want to communicate with me. They do not want to work on anything. They just sit there and almost like zombies in the classroom. And I've got to really pull out and really go after them to try to get them involved in the course. Every class has its own personality. So one semester I'll do great. Another semester, and averages weren't as well as I would like them to be. So that's the beauty of being a professor. Next semester, we just race the slate and do it all over again. But look at the numbers. We're up to 2,078 people uh, uh, you know, taking uh, the course, signed up for the course and stuff in the fall. Our numbers are continually increasing. And again, compared to that first semester, our standard deviations are much smaller. This was the fall 2019 exam. And you'll see the exact same thing where we have, um, you know, uh, pretty much how, how, how our exam folks are doing. And again, every semester, the exam changes too. So some semesters are maybe a little more difficult than other semesters based upon what questions we chose to put on them and stuff. We have a committee that creates the exams and stuff. So you get to see that. And uh, again, um, this one uh, all the way down here at the bottom. And so let me go back. Uh, we got it's in the spreads, but we got the new part-time faculty member, again, just learning the system. And you'll see, um, you know, their exams weren't that well, but, uh, and we also got the graduate student, but again, tougher semester, but again, the spread, again, is very, very consistent throughout, unlike what it used to be before we did the redesign. And then came the COVID pandemic. In the early part of March of the spring semester of 2020, 
we had to convert all classes to online and continue this modality throughout through the summer and fall semester of 2020. Okay. By the fall semester, instructors were given the tools to work synchronously with the students online, and a few sections were given the option to even have face-to-face. -face. This was last semester, um, which was great. I, I, you know, I had one of those classes and stuff, but even then, I had very few of my students actually come to class, come to campus. They actually, with the, with the COVID stuff, most of them actually stayed home and stuff, but they had that option uh, for a few, a few sections to actually come to face-to-face. -face. So let me show you those data results. All right, so this was the um, spring of 2020. So this would have been a smaller, smaller semester. And honestly, the averages dropped a wee bit, if you'll notice this. Uh, from 72 down to you know, pretty much 56. And the, la the one on the bottom is the classic online, online asynchronous. The rest of these were tried to do some kind of synchronous. We were doing some kind of WebEx and Zoom meetings and stuff like that. But you and I both know when you go completely online to some of these classes, our students, and I'm, I'm one of them, I'm not a big fan of online math classes. There, there are some great ones. And if you know what you're doing, great. But you know, you, for an online math class, you got to be kind of a self-starter type of person and self-motivator. And if you're not one of those, um, it does make it a lot tougher to get excited about the material and stuff. I mean, I, when I'm teaching my classes, I do everything I can to, you know, express my uh, excitement about the material within the Zoom link. Um, but uh, you do the best you can. And, and our grades did drop, but uh, you know, I think everything dropped during COVID. This was the spring semester. And in our fall semester, this we, we by this time, we've at really least got some doc cams that we got set up. Uh, we, we, we were better prepared. We got some stuff over the summer that the department ordered to help us create. But again, the numbers are still average wise, was a little down from what they used to be. We, were, we had we created a completely different type of final exam. It was an online final exam done through the Canvas. We wanted a common exam that everybody took so we can actually compare and contrast. And these were the numbers that we got. So the high that semester was a 76. And the low, let's see here, spring. Let's see, whoops, I'm sorry, messed up my problem here. Get my front one. Here we go. This was the high was a 76, and then the low was uh, down there at a 55. And look at our enrollment that semester, just to give you some data. Uh, you know, and thanks to COVID and stuff, our enrollment was down. We only had about 1,500 students taking a college algebra where we in a fall semester where we would typically have um, uh, literally close to 2,000, which is what we, we were getting before COVID hit and stuff. So. Hopefully soon we'll get back to normal and actually get back into face-to-face -face classes. I think with that type of dynamic and with the support from the uh, material we get from the Hawks and all our redesign stuff, it's going to you know, hopefully improve considerably. But just to, I'm giving you the facts of what our numbers happen to be and stuff. Okay, but there are problems with our redesign. You know, with all redesigns, it's a continuous development. It must be maintained, tweaked, modified in order to ensure the system is working efficiently. That's what we made our mistake at, okay? Faculty not using our Canvas page. Here's the first thing. Our original design did not carry over because we did not blueprint the Canvas page for all the Cal College faculty. Um, blueprinting it is we would take one Canvas page and design it and then push it out. And that's what we did kind of in the beginning uh, when we first did the redesign, but we didn't continue on with that. Instead of individual links to the pre-section videos, uh, at the last minute, it was decided to get one general link, so it's not quite as well organized and stuff, but that's all right. Hawks came to our system. A Hawks website was mostly used instead of our Canvas page because of the ease of use of the gradebook and the homework system. Kudos to Hawks, but Again, not to us because we weren't, uh, you know, using a common Canvas page that, you know, that we wanted to kind of link everybody and all the professors together. So, again, the, the professors are beginning to kind of do their own thing within the Hulk system. And again, our data is still good, no problems there, but 
and it's a problem with our redesign that we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at some more of, okay? Number three, and here's a big one here. No one completely in charge of maintaining the college algebra canvas page or, or pretty much doing anything. We've got the system set up and we just crank it up and we just let it roll, but no one's really in charge, okay? Our canvas page became minimalistic. It has a, a link to the notes, a direct link to the entire college algebra videos, but pretty much we have all the information we need actually embedded in the Hulk's uh, page and stuff like that, which is absolutely superb, but we still need that. We got a lot of stuff we have to do for the university. We have midterm grade reports, final exams, uh, final grades. We have uh, early alert systems and stuff like that. And that's one of those things we need that canvas page so we can actually report information instead of from, you know, the Hulk system and having to get that information back into our system and be able to upload it to the, the registrar and stuff like that. So we really do need to maintain a better Canvas page. Okay, solution to I the apologize problem. apologize for the interruption, but I wanted to give yeah. a quick minute warning to allow for questions. Okay, I will be, uh, let me do, almost done. Okay, uh, we're gonna be creating a new team to be uh, addressing this stuff. Uh, Ms. Desiree Taylor, Ms. Allison Han Allison, uh, Miano Hastings, and myself are going to be looking at creating a new uh, Canvas page, and uh, as well as um, redesigning uh, basically our Canvas page within, and we'll continue to update our half notes. So, and uh, again, I'll let you read the rest of this uh, in terms of we're going to continue to use the uh, the Hawk system absolutely because we keep using that certify into things there. Um, uh, with the college algebra implementation, one of the big things we're going to do is going to have strong coordination. We finally got somebody from administration that actually sees what we need and is interested in strong coordination. That means we have a, uh, a course coordinator going to be in charge of the program of the course each semester and going to manage and help out the other faculty within the UNC system side and as well as the Hawks folks helping us out with the Hawk system, stuff like that. So, and then uh, the last thing here, I'll let you read this, but yeah, it's been five years since I made that video. And literally uh, right there, just before Christmas, I had a student who actually sent me an email and it was, it was a college algebra student. And I really do appreciate this email. Um, basically he uh, said that uh, uh, he was a freshman and he took college algebra for the first time. And he was a, a you know, music ed major and uh, he was scared to death of math and hasn't been a good in math all of his life. And then um, after having me as a professor, because I made all those online videos that uh, still embedded in the Hawk system, and thanks to the Hawk's computer system, he actually got a better handle on the college algebra, ended up making an A in the course, and he just wanted to send me a personal thank you. So, and I will continue, let, you, let you guys know as we get more data and we start tweaking our, our system one more time. All right, I'm here to answer any questions. All right, so our first question is from Professor Rosanov. Hello, I would like to ask, why are there only one doctoral level, level in the field on these redesigned college algebra courses process? Why is there only one doctoral level person? Um, well, uh, we, we do have more. We have our, the influx of the math education folks with their doctor degrees and they kind of oversee what we do, but it's actually our lecturers who were in charge at UNC Charlotte who are in charge of these redesigns because they're the ones that work clo more closely with the students. Um, again, it's the nature of the, the college algebra that we're dealing with. Uh, when you're at the university level, most of our faculty with the, with the doctoral degrees are working at the higher level classes and, um, and with the smaller you know, graduate level classes, the undergraduate, junior and senior level classes. When it comes to the college algebra classes, um, we do tend to use a lot of the part-timers, uh, adjunct, uh, adjunct faculty, uh, and graduate students, using our graduate students uh, and start working with them with this stuff. So the ones that are, are honestly the better teachers at the university that are really there to teach are our lecture positions. And those are the ones that typically are put on these committees because they know better than anybody 
what's needed and what's not needed, what their students uh, need, what the students are, are lacking and so forth. Our next question is from the same professor. Do the presenters hold some evidence of statistical data that students were using design, redesigned material prepared for them by a redesign team or students were using different preparation material outside from other sources? Do you have any evidence of that? Uh, they are using the, they, I have the, we're using the redesign that we put in there that's actually embedded in Hawks. They're using our, our, um, our notes and stuff, uh, you know, the, the half notes, they're watching my videos uh, that we created that we embedded in those things, those pre-section videos. Now, uh, are they using other outside sources as well? Um, I, I hope so. I mean, there's lots of great stuff out there on the internet, and but that's typically a personal choice of theirs, but we don't have much on that type of stuff actually put into our course. We are looking at some of the OERs and, um, and looking at maybe some other avenues of some other places to, to help with certain types of problems and things like that. Um, but the way our course is, it is set up and embedded in, within the, uh, you know, the, the Hawks page basically is what it's turned into. We have the videos actually embedded in there. We've got the uh, notes embedded in there. Um, so it, that this is what's being delivered. Now, if a student had takes it under their own accord to go look up somewhere else, or, you know, that, that's absolutely wonderful. We encourage that, but we don't provide that to them. Maybe individual professors may outside do that, but I don't have any data in terms of what's done from what's being brought in, what the other professors are doing and stuff. 90% uh, of them are graduate students and, and part-timers and stuff. They're pretty much presenting exactly the system we got and they're working with the, with the students individually to try to get the material understood, but not, nothing from an outside source. All right. And we do have one last question um, from Professor Hunt. Are your tests during COVID proctored? Yes, we are beginning to use the Respondus Lockdown Browser. Yay for us. Okay. Um, there's two ways that we typically give to give tests. Now, again, it's up to an individual professor. Uh, we, you know, we don't want to step on professor's toes on this. Um, most of them are actually using the lockdown browser. Few of them, and I was one of these guys at the beginning, I was monitoring my students via Zoom. They were taking the test while on the Zoom link. And myself and my graduate assistants and my, my, my uh, preceptors were sit there and monitoring the class as a whole while they were actually taking the test. But we, you know, it pretty much is basically right there in front of you. Um, but a lot of us, and I've switched over to using the Respondus Lockdown Browser. Uh, that kind of helps us out because, again, one of our big problems is volume of, uh, of students in our class. Uh, most of the classes I teach have about 120 students in there. That's kind of tough to observe even during before COVID, when I was in my class, I always have my graduate students kind of walking the class while they're taking the test, the traditional way. Now that we're online, I'm, I'm doing the same thing I used to with the Zoom. Now I'm doing it with Respondus. And uh, with Respondus, I've got a video recording of what's exactly going on. And uh, I use that, you know, the high, the medium, and the low uh, uh, to kind of rank whether I need to go inspect what's exactly going on and stuff like that. And I also have my graduate students kind of follow behind me and we're kind of checking uh, how the students are doing, but we are using the Respondus Lockdown Browser and most of the faculty at this level are using that. that, that we have it kind of embedded within uh, our Canvas system and our Canvas sites and stuff that, uh, you know, it's really easy to set up for us to be able to do something like that. All right, thank you so much. Um, are there any other questions? We have one more minute for another question or two. All right, it looks like we have no other questions. Thank you, Dr. Taylor, for your val uh, sharing this valuable information with us today. I'm going to launch a quick three question poll on the presentation you just watched. So please take a moment to share your feedback. All right. 
The next and current sessions will begin at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can view the chat for session meeting room links or access the conference website for a complete list of concurrent sessions and their descriptions. While accessing the conference website, don't forget to swing by the exhibit hall to say hello to the Hawks team. View a quick five minute demonstration and be entered to win the hourly giveaway. Your choice of a smart pen, standing desk or $100 Amazon gift card. We'll see you at the next session.